Warning. The Outsider's Edge contains strong opinions, unconventional views, and contrarian stances. Listen, if you dare. Hey, yo! inaugural edition of the outsider's edge and you guys have messed up because y'all let me and carl have our own show i realized that this isn't our first show but uh you know caleb was kind of like the angel on the shoulder he gone it's just me and carl now and i'm yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry for what y'all about to hear but yes it's your boy rance aka ray cash what's going on always with my partner in crime King Curvin, a.k.a. Carl. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's been a long weekend, but I'm yeah. home, back with my family, and ready to um, talk some wrestling while they sleep. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of got to do this stuff in, in, the, in the secret, like in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we go any further, for those of you who don't know anything about the Outsider's Edge... The Outsider's Edge is something Carl and I started in column form, wow, like maybe seven, six, seven years ago. Yeah, six, seven years ago. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, uh, we are definitely not conventional. Uh, never have been, never will be. Uh, we ain't about to start. And uh, we give you kind of a different perspective on things you probably never thought about. And uh, yeah, man, we, we're, we're kind of podcast outlaws can i call us that is that okay <laughs> so you didn't know well that might be controversial in its own self because everybody seems to hate road dog all of a sudden yeah so. yeah that's a good point yeah so i'm definitely the badass billy gun though of this group <laughs> just need to, be, need to let that be said uh <laughs> so I, I have all the charisma then is what you're saying and you're just the guy who can wrestle i'm a big dude who can wrestle yeah i guess so. i'm the talent fair enough um so yeah we're not going to bore you with like another WrestleMania review because God, I've done maybe like seven of those <laughs> since Sunday. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to kind of give you things a little differently. I mean, we're going to talk about WrestleMania definitely because that is the thing to talk about. Uh, but Carl was there actually at WrestleMania. Um, so I kind of want to get your perspective on what you saw live first because there is a very stark difference between uh what's what you see on tv and what you see there now granted i enjoyed the show from top to bottom on tv but you know like what was it like in the arena yeah so you know here's the thing like this is my third wrestlemania um i was at 25 in houston 32 in dallas and 34 this year um and the one thing about it that I think if you've never been to a WrestleMania and like, let's put it this way. If you didn't enjoy this year's WrestleMania and you watch it from your television. Okay. And you've never been to a WrestleMania and you find yourself disappointed at a WrestleMania. I can understand it. Cause sometimes things don't come across on television a certain way. However, and I just, I'm, this is just one guy's opinion, but when you first walk into the Superdome and any arena in general for WrestleMania, there's just like this feeling that kind of comes over you. Like this just washes over you. Like the atmosphere. You, yeah. Like, you know, you're going to have a good time regardless. Like if every match on the card is trash and every result doesn't go the way you want it to go. Like the whole spectacle of it all is just, it's almost overwhelming, but it just, it comes to, I haven't gone back and watched the show yet, but I have just haven't had the time. But when I get a chance, I'm going to go back and watch it just to kind of compare. But there's just something about the way, when you're in with the people, the people that you've been seeing on Bourbon Street all weekend, the people that you've been seeing at other shows all weekend, the people that are used to been seeing at the Superstore, and you just know, like, it's the same people. We're all there for the same reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's just, like, this feeling, and it, it's almost like nothing can kill your vibe. And that doesn't – that's that's me. 
You know, some people, some people are different, you know, maybe they a were lot there of people had their vibes it. killed. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and that's, and that's fine. But you know, I'm telling you right. If you haven't had the chance to go experience a WrestleMania live and in person, and I don't care if you are a, I'm not even that big of a fan of WWE, but you just like wrestling. You got to go. Like you just, I mean, get the money if you can, I'm not saying go put a second mortgage out on your house to do it. But if you ever have the opportunity, if it's close by, you know, and I feel sorry sometimes for people overseas because they're n- never going to get one over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, maybe but eventually, but right maybe now. Maybe one day, not. but right now, yeah. You know, and it's just like, so, but if you ever have that opportunity, I highly, highly suggest it because the way it is in person is so much different from how it is on TV. And I can just like, I went to 32 and 34 and didn't go to 33. And I can specifically remember thinking, huh, oh, 33 is just, yeah, it's a wrestling show. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm, and a good wrestling show, but it's just a wrestling show. It's like there's something about being there live, and it's just yeah. you cannot – you just you can't understand it until you've experienced it. And, so. and you, you get that feeling with the, with a lot of wrestling shows if you go live, but there's a difference. There's a, a, a different level when it comes to WrestleMania because, I mean, all the superlatives they give it. The, it's wrestling's Oscars or wrestling's Grammys or wrestling's Super Bowl or wrestling's this or wrestling's that. It's all yeah. of that. It's all yeah. of that. Um, but there's a camaraderie with with fans that you have when you because I went to 30, I went to 32. I was supposed to go to 34, but I had some medical issues that didn't let me go. Um, but you know, but there's and any any live show you go to, uh, I like to describe it as a hive mentality that once you get in there, like everything is different. Once you get in there with those, yeah. with those, with those fans, you start chanting for shit you never really, you never thought you would chant for. Absolutely, you start yes. doing things you never thought you would do. You start cheering for things or booing things you never thought you would cheer or boo. Absolutely, you know, you start like I would never ever in my life ever 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 in my life choose to do the wave, but I've been to a show where I've done the wave before. Of course, yeah, and you have to. You just have to because you're compelled. It's like a hive mentality. So. While we're speaking of hive mentality, let's go ahead yeah. and let's talk about this Roman Reigns thing. Let's let's jump in there. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, like I said, we're not gonna go match by match. Like by at this point, you've heard every podcast you're gonna listen to we'll talk about WrestleMania. We're not gonna give you that. We're gonna talk about more tangible things and like probably more important topics from a different perspective. Yeah. Um, but the Roman Reigns thing. So. Uh, there's so much to unpack with this. Number one, my, I, I want to start with this question to you, first and foremost. Yeah. You know, when I picked Braun to win the Elimination Chamber, I got laughed at. And again, I bring I keep bringing that up not to make fun of those who, who laughed at me, but to say there was, a, there was a reason they laughed at me, and they were right to laugh at me, because I understand the thought process that LOL Roman wins, right? Yeah. With Roman losing, and with Brock quote unquote resigning, even though there were reports that he was already signed through August anyway. Right. Was Roman ever booked to win this anyway? Because clearly there's a a, a continuation of a story that they want to finish that wasn't yeah. supposed to finish at WrestleMania, even though we <clears throat> thought it was. And looking right. at it in hindsight, was it ever supposed to finish WrestleMania? And was Roman ever supposed to win? Well, you know, here's the thing about this, and I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I will say this. I'm, this is the one thing of WrestleMania that not only confused me the most, yeah. but also disappointed me the most. Yeah. Um, first of all, it was hard for me to get into the match for a couple of reasons. One, the crowd had no interest. Zero. And there's and was, first, and first for of those all, of you who who watch who don't think that it came across on TV, it did. We yeah. heard everything. We knew. Of course, yeah. And he, here's the thing. There's a couple. Of, I, I'm gonna give the crowd. I was a little pissed, but I'm going to give him a little bit, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Cause for one thing, we've been there for seven hours. Okay. Yeah, and you are point. tired by the time you get to the end of this show. Yeah. And when you go out there and put on that specific kind of match, which was basically a glorified squash match. Yeah. You can't really, what do you expect? You know, and I'm not sure this is not, I'm listen, I was excited for this match from the beginning and I knew it well, would main events. You and I are Roman fans. So Yeah. And I, I was ready to see the belt, the belt come off Brock. That was what, and I think even though we all kind of thought we knew what was going to happen, mm-hmm. you know, I think 
there was still like a, uh, at least we'll have a full-time champ that's there a lot. You know, I think that was kind of a thing that a lot of people were looking forward to because that's always been the gripe on Brock. You looking know? forward to was a very ambitious term. I'd say well, we're just, expecting. Yeah, just looking forward to in the sense that at least we know now that it's a beatable champion. Sure. Like it's it's not Brock Lesnar, the unstoppable monster that nobody can beat no matter what. He gets to do whatever he wants. He shows yeah. up once every couple months, you know, whatever. So yeah. with that with that being said... You know, I get it. You know, if I'm the crowd, I mean, and this match, this is the match we got. Like, and like, even the whole thing, the whole thing with Roman getting busted open felt forced. Like to me, like I thought they were trying to almost try and go the route of like, okay, we'll crack his crack his skull open, and he'll get that Stone Cold Steve Austin love, and that shit wasn't gonna happen either. Well, like, I don't, I don't know if that was if he planned that. I don't know if that was right. planned. Right. It could, and who knows? Right. I mean, that's the thing. That's another thing you kind of get with like Brock Lesnar himself is a bit of a wild card. You don't yeah. really know what you're going to get with him. And I'm not, you know, there's reports there was heat at the end of the night. And I don't know if that's Brock Lesnar being mad at the, with the way the match went or Vincent Mann being mad that Brock, you know, busted Roman up the hard way or the, whatever. The story, the way the story, the way the report goes is that Vince confront, not confronted, but said something to Brock because he wasn't supposed to throw him into the German announce table. If you notice that the Germans almost got hit because oh, they were yeah, prepared yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah. And th- they, that he didn't approve the blood and right. Brock was like, I do what I want. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if you want to say, Hey, they swerved us all and that makes you feel better. Like that's fine. But I just don't like, and if, you know, they got this event coming up in Saudi Arabia and maybe the idea is, well, Roman wins the title in a steel cage there because he'll get cheers. If that's what you think they're doing, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And as I've told you, as I've told you, and you know, you you may have a completely different opinion. That's fine because mm-hmm. I love the show from top to bottom. I enjoyed mm-hmm. the shit out of myself. But at this point, and I mean this sincerely, I don't give a shit about the universal title until it comes off Brock Lesnar. And it's not because, and and I don't want anybody giving me the whole, oh Brock's got you worked, man. He's he's a, such a heel. He's got you worked. No, no, no. Like, I genuinely have no interest anymore in him as the champ. That is, and I'm not, that is, that is how I feel. I don't care who takes it off of him. I don't give it, at this point, I do not care. Just do it for me. And that's fine. You know, it's what it is, what it is. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that to you, even though I'm going to say that to you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So. You know, I've I've spit this theory a couple times over the past couple days, and you know, it's the first time I spit it. The news came out while I was spitting it to Simon Cotton from Sports Kita, and literally as I was getting him to understand and accept and agree with me, the news came out that Brock was resigned and he was going to Saudi Arabia, and just killed all of what I was saying. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that boy talk like Vince is cutting my knees from under me, dog. But uh. So I really truly I really truly believe this in my heart. Like I've already been out and open about. Uh, I feel like the business is changing from uh, devaluing traditional gimmicks and valuing more character traits. And I've right. also been pretty vocal about the business is moving away from traditional heel and face, sure. uh, for the most part, and just shades of gray. So you know you are who you are, based on who you're fighting or the situation or. Most of the time, the, whether the crowd wants to cheer you or not, which changes quite often, you know, that's how your alignment is and whatnot. And you just kind of stick to your character and what your character would do. But we live in a world now where uh, wrestling is criticized more about the backstage aspect of it than it is about the in-ring aspect of it. We live in a world where you'll cri- we, we criticize the reason somebody won or lost a match other than how they want to lost the match like that's the criticism now like we're so in tune with what's happening backstage we're so obsessed with what's happening backstage uh dave Meltzer, this is kind of he's the catalyst for a lot of this sure that that, that is that's the narrative that's what we we care about more often a lot of the times so with that being said vince being the consummate businessman he is and the wrestling aficionado he is which he is Sure. I feel like he's trying to find a different way to work us, a more realistic way. Because good, bad, indifferent, like it, hate it, or or whatever. If you get if you get so invested in a wrestling angle 
to where you are physically angry or physically happy. You are you have been worked. Right. That is the point of the show. So I say all that to kind of give you my theory and kind of kind of a little bit. Uh, Roman is the guy who nobody who the fans the the diehards don't want to cheer, right? Yeah. Roman is a guy who the diehards <clears throat> just feel like has been overpushed and want somebody else to be in that spot. Roman is a guy who the guy who the diehards feel like while he's a good worker and he's better that he's better than uh, he's better than maybe they then they accept how that he's a good hand and a good wrestler and this that and the other, but they don't think he should be in the position he is right. That's the narrative about Roman, right? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, almost to the point of apathy to a certain section of the crowd. Well, all I've been told all year is that. We know Roman was going to get coronated. Uh, this was his coronation, and they 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 moved the goalposts for Roman to quote my boy Rich, and we've known since thirty one that this was going to be it, right? And then his big night comes, and of course you know he's going to get booed and this that and the other, but the prevailing thought is, well, you know, I don't even care about the match. Roman's going to win, so we can go and move on with our lives, right? And he loses. Yeah. Not only does he lose, but he effectively gets squashed by a guy who was very clearly and advertised by the owner of the UFC to be going back right after WrestleMania. Yeah. Right? So for the first time in a long time, fans, especially the subset of fans who don't like Roman or are tired of him or whatever, were like, oh my God, I feel bad for this dude. To some degree. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to say one thing I'm going to get, I want to, uh, something you had mentioned a while back and when we were still doing just SMC or just regular yeah. talk and whatever, um, that I want to give you credit for, because I think it's important to note, um, okay. Roman, as you said, and the reason why you chose Braun to win that elimination chamber, mm -hmm. because Roman has this whole year has never really been booked. Like he was going to WrestleMania as the main eventer. Worst year of his career. Yeah. He's Go been getting his ass whooped. Yeah, he's been getting his ass whooped all year long. Yes. And so, you know, you, in that sense, you're right. And the res end result of Mania proves that point. Absolutely. Because he got his ass kicked, okay? So, and I say that to say this, and I have another point on top of that, but I'll make it quick. No, go ahead. Uh, it's more of a question at the end of this, but my other point is this. When Brock was whooping his ass up and down New Orleans – <laughs> um, pretty much after yeah. yeah after Brock cracked his head open Roman had a little bit of a comeback okay and the crowd the whole match has been doing the whole this is awful we want beach ball whatever they were yeah. chanting you know I don't know like I was yeah. trying to tune it out hard to do when it's that overwhelming but yeah. 70, there was a point plus. after Roman is bleeding Roman got a like a just a tad bit of wind and speared Brock yeah for that moment, and, I, and if you were there, you know it's true. If you weren't, maybe you didn't hear it. I don't know. But if, for that moment, they were. There was a little bit of like, a, oh, he's gonna win. Mm -hmm. Now, it was it was an excitement. Maybe was it an excitement for the sake of thank God this match is over. Maybe was it yeah. excitement for the fact that oh shit, Brock is gonna lose because the reality is I think most people there not only thought Roman was gonna win but probably wanted Brock to lose. Expected Brock yeah. to lose. Yeah. So for a, just a smidgen, they had it. And if there was an audible there, at the, I don't know when Vince changed his mind or decided, or even if he ever changed his mind. If there the whole go. plan was, I don't know what Vince's plan was, but if at any point he was hoping he he had thought that Roman was gonna win. If he changed his mind, I think it's the wrong call because at that moment, mm -hmm. at that moment in the match that had been getting shit on from start to finish, the fans were happy about it. I, and not only were they happy, they were they were going to accept Roman. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying he – no, no. What I mean by that is he wasn't going to win the title and they were going to like – the whole crowd was going to be in an uproar like, woo! But I don't think he gets booed out of the building the way the result of that match got booed out of the building. I, I... truly don't think that was going to happen. And my question for you at the end. Okay. This is my question for you at the end. Okay. And I don't know if it's going to happen because, fuck, I don't know. But mm -hmm. if Roman Reigns, if all this 
just say the, you know, some people that are speculating, okay? Just get for the sake of argument. If Roman wins this title match in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. in the steel cage match, is this, I mean, what's what was the point? Like, well, is it all for nothing? Like, because it's almost like you could have just crowned him at Mania. Your show of, sh- like, your show of shows. That is, like, the place where you crown people. You crown Daniel okay. Bryan. I got you crown you. a Shawn Michaels. Yeah. You, you crown a Stone Cold. Like, if Roman is your guy for the foreseeable future, why don't you crown him at Mania instead of Saudi Arabia? If they do it. I'm not saying they're going to do it. Sure. But if but they yeah, do it. Assuming they do, right. Okay. So, uh, for the record, I I I would I want to agree with what you're saying because you were there, but just I just can't believe that that crowd was going to accept Roman in any way, form, or fashion, even even if it was just an apathy accepting acceptance. Right. I think that's it, fair. Yeah. I just I just I'm it's not hard saying for me I'm, to accept I'm not saying I'm right. I just sure. like it was a, it was a small feeling I had for a second. Like yeah. Okay. But yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Sure. So to answer your question, I'm going to answer your question like this. WrestleMania is the show of shows, it's the showcase of the immortals, it's the Grand Stage of the Mall, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But it's, at the end of the day, it's still a wrestling show. And at the yeah. end of the day, when the show ends, they move to the next town, and there's another show the next day. Sure. So you cannot book to end a story at WrestleMania. You cannot do that. You can book to have a moment that lasts forever at WrestleMania. Daniel sure. Bryan's story lasted forever. That that will ne- that win in the WrestleMania and all that which I was yes. there for, will last forever. Will never go away. Undertaker last year, the match was trash, but his his send-off and all of that and the stuff in the ring will last forever. These things will never, ever go away. Um, uh, Savage and Elizabeth reuniting. Um, you know, Austin shaking hands with Vince. Like, all of these moments will never go away. But they had to continue the next night. Right. So... If this is a bit a part of a bigger story that's not finished, which we don't want to, we all don't seem to accept, but it's clearly the case. The story ain't over yet, you know. And 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 that and the problem reason we don't accept it is because we never we had convinced ourselves, which we do a lot with Roman Reigns, that the story was supposed to and going to end at WrestleMania. Clearly, what they're telling you is we were wrong. That's not the end of the story. Now. Uh, I tend to like, at least be intrigued, that's a better word, with what they're trying to say. Roman is trying to drum it up as some kind of conspiracy, right? Right. Um, and yeah, it gets a little meta, but you know what? You can't complain about them being meta when all you want to know about is the backstage of it anyway. Don't, I, I miss me with all that. Yeah. Miss me, miss me with that, you know? If you don't want them to be meta, then, then get rid of your Observer subscription. No, sure. Like, like, miss me with all that. But... What he's the story he's trying to tell, and that I, I feel like Vince is trying to tell is this. One thing Vince has all Vince, I, I respect him to the end of time for this. He's fine with saying blame me. Oh he's yeah, fine sure. With saying I'm the bad guy, I'll take the heat. So what I feel like they're trying to take the story to is, and if you watched Raw, you saw this is nobody told Roman that Brock resigned nobody yeah yeah told, nobody told roman that the plans changed brock shot on roman the way the story's going right sure so you know and while of course we know this is fake like and we in while you want to keep some semblance of some respect for the business we know it's all fake right right so at the end of the day a dude shooting on another guy like, and I, it, the sympathy for Roman, whatever. That's that that is a fifteen hour show. Like we we talk about that forever, but it's part of a bigger story, right? Right. Which is, and I know I've heard people, some people criticize. Well, why does Roman get another title shot? Vince Vince has always shown as as a kayfabe booker. Why did why did Stone Cold get all those title shots? Yeah. Why did The Rock get all those title shots? Why did Shawn Michaels get all those title shots? Why did John Cena get all those title shots? Why was CM Punk put in the match in the first place when they knew he was going to leave the show? Maybe they should have just kicked him out of the match, right? When they know he was leaving. But we don't question those. We just question it when we don't like the guy, right? So, so if the story would have ended 
at WrestleMania with Brock winning the title, then let's get our pitchforks. But the story isn't over yet. And I don't even know if the story is over in Jeddah. So give them a chance to tell the story. Yeah, not you know, that's the thing. I'm I'm down to do that. But there's fatigue with you, I get it. Yeah, and there there is, because this is a story if you wanna if you if you if you're one of those people who believes that, that they've you know, to quote Rich, right, they've moved the goalposts for Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And this is this long drawn out story, and you have to accept that this is a long drawn story because you like Longer than you we can't, expected, yes. Yeah, way longer. And and your weight, like, I'm not saying that we should be rushing for a conclusion because I love a good long story. Mm-hmm. But when you start moving into this territory where you're getting – and not only that, but now you're moving Samoa Joe into this who's waiting for Roman at Backlash, which mm-hmm. is going to be after the Saudi Arabia event. I'm pretty sure if my math is correct. After, yes. I, yes. So – what does that mean, right? Where does Joe fit into this? Because Joe is literally, maybe for a second outside of Braun, the only person who's looked like a threat to, to Lesnar at any point, at any time in, yeah. in, in the last, since other than Goldberg. Yes. Joe, okay. Ro- Joe, Roman, and Braun are the only guys. Yes. So what does it mean, right? So, yeah, okay. And you know what? I want to I wanna just kind of jump away from, from this because I think okay. we've covered the details. Yeah. But it's a really good segue in what you're getting at into what we were going to – what we really wanted to get at for this show. Okay. We wanted to talk about storytelling versus match quality, right? Yes, which and is this, a very precarious it, conversation to have. Yes, and if you believe like you believe and like I – I'm almost forced to believe at this point that there has to be more to it than what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I, in my head, I thought it ended at WrestleMania, Mm -hmm. which I don't think is, I think that's fair that, you know what I mean? I think a lot of people thought it was going to end at WrestleMania. No, that's a completely understandable expectation. Yes. Right. So if you like, if there's a long, if we're going for a long story here, I think it's fair to understand and to, to realize how important, telling those stories are and why they're more important in my opinion the match quality okay because if 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 roman and brock is a story okay if you take that versus the match quality and you you, like you compare the two the match sucked okay and i'm not trying to be a jerk i thought the match sucked the match was not bad it's just nobody cared yeah but i mean it's still like it just didn't do much for me yeah it was, uh, a, it was a it was an average match, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So, um, anyways, what I'm what I'm going to get at is this whole weekend, I thought I, I I got online and I talked about a lot of um matches that I enjoyed, um, and most and you know some of them were fun, some of them were story driven. Uh, the the main one that was more fun than anything I talked about was at the Supercard of Honor. It was Young Bucks and Flip Gordon versus SoCal Uncensored. That was more fun. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But I, you have to say Future in the Kingdom because they played a big part in that match. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, but the rest of those matches, even all the way down to the Kaiju Big Battle match I chose, and we're not going to talk about that, but it, they were story driven. Okay. And like, you can even say... The Charlotte Oscar match, which was my favorite match of the weekend, mm-hmm. was not necessarily story driven, but I would disagree with you. So, you know, there was a story there. It was Charlotte trying to beat the streak. Yes, in you terms know, of the in, build up to the to the match. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't like this long term thing. Yes. But we talk about Cody versus Kenny. Okay. Okay. And then um, Gargano the Chapel, I guess you could throw in. Yeah, well, I'm gonna get there. Uh, tr- Triple H, Steph versus Rousey and Angle, and 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 Champa versus Gargano. To me, those were the three matches that relied mostly on storytelling, mm-hmm. but still, the matches themselves also. Out, Cody and Kenny was okay of a match, but the story was so good. The heat on Cody was so big. Yeah. In that match, okay, that the, the match didn't have to be good, and that that that's kind of my point, like. You go back and look at these matches. If the stories are good, the matches don't have to really be all that great. Absolutely. Like, for, for instance, and I, I want to talk about specifically, to me, this is the biggest example is the Triple H Stephanie versus Ronda and Angle match. 
let's just think about this for a second. Ronda Rousey has never wrestled a match in the WWE. Never. Stephanie McMahon is not a wrestler. Okay. Wrestled less than 20. Yeah. And, and really, she's still not that great. Kurt Angle is a great wrestler a long time ago. But he, but now, he is literally a, the letter S. He's the letter S. He can't move. So we all knew Triple H was in for um, was in for he's going to have to be the ring general. He's going to have to make make it happen, right? Mm-hmm. But people hate and Triple H, God bless him, master storyteller. And you see, and I don't care if you disagree with me, fight me on this, okay? Oh, he's okay. a master storyteller, and he proved it at NXT take, Takeover. If you didn't watch it, because I know he has a lot to do with that show, from what I understand. No, so. It, it, it is his show, yes. Exactly. So, but he proved it at WrestleMania too, because the authority, as it were, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, every year they're involved in something. Mm-hmm. And every year we can't wait for them to get their ass beat. That's what we live for. Yes. Okay. And, and not only did they do that, the same thing this year, but they included what is literally the biggest signing they've ever had. Ronda yeah, Rousey. I would agree. It gets it gets no bigger. Okay, and and Ronda did great for an in ring debut, by the way. And I, I'm not trying to take anything away from her, but as far as a match goes, this isn't exactly a a great match. Okay, you're not going to look at it and say, "Oh man, five star wrestling." No, oh, you're going to say five star. View, yeah. Correct. And I get it. You know, I've got into this argument with people before. Like the totality of a match includes the heat on the match or the crowd reaction mm-hmm. along with the quality of the match itself. Yes. But the heat on this match and, and the crowd interaction in this match is so good. And just, it's so overwhelming that it didn't matter. They could have gone out there and taken a shit in the middle of the ring for 10 minutes and people would have been on it because they were so like everyone was, as long as Rousey, got her some of Stephanie and as long as Rousey got her some of Triple H in that respect, even Angle to some degree. Yeah. It was fine. They could have done anything else. And and that is to the to the broader point why it's so important because guys, it's the same thing with and I wanna, you know, just quickly touch on Cody and Kenny here because it's the same thing. The match was all right. Like you you said this many times before, Cody can't really keep up with Kenny because Kenny no. works a very fast style. Yeah. And that's uh, and I'm that's no hate on Cody, okay? He works Cody's his a great style. Wrestler. Yeah, it's just Kenny's another level. Yeah. Kenny just does he's crazy, right? He does, he's just all over the place. But the heat, dude, Cody's out there flipping people off and taking drinks from people and then spitting it back in their face. Cody and did like, every old school heel tactic in the Yes. Place. Yes. He is like and I'm a big Cody Rhodes fan anyway. A lot of people that know me know that. But man, he's just right now, right now, he's on a on another level and, and for what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And God bless his wife, Brady Rhodes, out there taking the V trigger into a table. Like everything about that match was like from the crowd, like mm-hmm. the, the heat on these matches, they're telling a story. And that's why story story time is so much more important than wrestle time. And well, that's why you're never going to get me away from that theory. You know what I mean? Let me give it to you on the other perspective. Yeah. So what would you consider as the, was the most, not what would you consider, what would, have you heard from all the chatter that we've heard since Sunday would be the consensus most disappointing match on the WrestleMania card, if not the whole weekend? Uh, Roman and Brock. No, no, no. Shinsuke versus AJ. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. And the reason, oh, you, okay, yeah, because of the expectation for the expectation. it. Expectation, yeah. and the reason that was the most disappointing is because people expected so much of it. But when you go back and watch it, the, and I know, and I know you're that you were there, so I know you, I'm sure the crowd was involved. But when you go back and watch it, it's it was extremely quiet. And don't try to sell me on that they were doing Japanese stuff because they've never done that before. This yeah, is no, the no. WWE crowd. Um, so many people think that the match wasn't that good. Go back and watch it. It was a really, really good match, but there was no crowd involvement. There was no real story going into the match, which was purposefully purposefully done because of the story told after the match, but things of that nature. So I agree 100% with you, but I do need to stick up for the other side. I wouldn't mm. be me if I didn't do that. Yeah. And, and and I'm, I'm going to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm not sticking up for them, but I do feel like there's a the other side has a point. 
sometimes you just like what you like, right? Every generation of wrestling, not just fans, but the wrestlers in general, have all had their they've all had their own thing, right? And they've all had to evolve. Like in the, the business in the seventies, you basically had to work in a town or a territory for three months and then you had to leave. You had yeah. to leave because they were tired of you. Or they did you didn't want them to get tired of you and so on and so forth, right? So it was a totally different thing. Like back in the day you would end the match with the arm bar or a roll up or, you know, just the most ridiculous, simplest chain hold possible, but that would end the match because that's what wrestling was. Nineties we got into hardcore, right? The two thousands we got into globalization and WWE taking over the business and then these indie guys having to build it back up. Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Austin Aries, James Gibson, uh, Samoa Joe, so on and so forth, right? So the business has always evolved. And I feel like the business has evolved to the point, from an indie standpoint, not from a professional company standpoint, New Japan, Ring of Honor, WWE, so on and so forth. But the business has evolved to a point where you have a group of guys who grew up just loving wrestling. They didn't grow up loving sports entertainment. Daniel Bryan is probably the catalyst. For, is one of the main people who is who I would point to with that. If Daniel could wrestle in front of 30 people every day for the rest of his life, he would. He don't care about the, the crowd. He don't care about the promos. He just want to wrestle, right? So there's a, there there is a group of there's a group of wrestlers who believe in that in that theory, and they're because of those wrestlers is a group of fans who believe in that theory. So while I truly believe in my soul they're wrong, there's still there's a reason and a point and a group and a market for that. Now, the fear of that, the problem with that, the negative aspect of that is this. When you focus solely on just the in-ring product and don't care about the rest of it, one, you limit yourself in terms of who you can be marketed to. Yeah. Two, the question then becomes why did you just fight MMA and I realize that that's an ignorant question but it's a real question and number three the, you, you, you start to start talking about are you going to hurt yourself the right. fear that we have the conversation we had in the last SMC uh, last week about the, the Cody situation with Disco you know and, and a, a guy like uh, Shibata who is clearly and very clearly was one of the best wrestlers in the world and might have been a guy who ascended to that big four spot in New Japan but can never wrestle again. Or Daniel Bryan who had to take two, three years off because of his, you know, because of his injuries and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you it's something that you have to worry about because when you don't put a story into your matches, then there's never a level where you can, there's never a stopping point. <clears throat> Right? Yeah, I know you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just going to continue to go further and further and further and further. So people bitched about the 6F5s Roman Reigns took, right? Yeah. Well, on the indies, Jesus Christ, if if there's no story, if you just go out there wrestling to wrestle, then why would 6F5s finish? Why not go to 10? Why not go to 15? Why not go to sure. 20? You know, and I realize I'm being I, I realize I'm, I'm 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 being hyperbolic right now, but the point is still valid that guys you know there has to be a reason for what you're doing and there has to be a reason yeah. the reason you do this move and the reason you stop at this point and the reason you do this and the reason you do that okay so i'm you know i'm glad you brought up the aj shinsuke match because you're absolutely right the match was awesome not i mean not awesome but it was good it was a good match good wrestling match uh you go back and watch it on tv i had a, a friend of mine that was with me he went back and watched it on tv that night when we got home um, and he was like, you know, this came across a lot better on television than it does in a live crowd. Cause yeah, the crowd was pretty quiet. Um, and, and, but, and for, for the record, just let me jump yeah. in real quick. I, I acknowledge that this was the third to last, the third to last match in the card. I, yeah. I they, they were tired. The timing, but, but hold on. I'm not going to give that excuse because people were, people complained before the show, that this should have been the show to end the match, end the, to end the show. So well, if you if yeah. you wanted to end the show, then you had the energy 
to give this match the, the energy that it needed and in the third to last spot. Or second it's to last not spot. even not even that. It's not getting an excuse because Braun Strowman came out right afterward and the crowd got hot again. So I don't like I wasn't even thinking about that. But yes, you're yeah, right. I mean, that, that's that's not going to work for me. But the point is, the thing is, what actually got the crowd hot for that match? The end. Yeah. The, the when story Shinsuke, part. with the story part when Shinsuke dropped hit the low blow on AJ all of a sudden we're invested again okay and it goes to my point like and it's why I'm glad you brought this match up because as good as the match was as as you know if you go back and watch it it's a good match but maybe they didn't live up to Wrestle Kingdom hype but like I said before they can't they don't do in WWE what they do in New Japan okay in New Japan they beat the shit out of each other it's pretty common they don't do that in the WWE. They just don't. So any high expectation you had should have at least been limited to what a WWE match will allow them to do. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? we all made. Because I had, to, I thought they were going to wrestle the. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I think, give a star and it's, rating and it's for the fair. I'm not, I'm not giving anybody hell for no, having. We deserve hell. We should have known better. Yeah. But you know, well, the interesting part of this was that it's continuing on. It's the same thing with the Brock and Ruel we think is continuing. As long as, long as the shakeup doesn't change anything. No, there is, that's going to continue. Absolutely. Yeah. So you 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 kind of have this – I think it's reasonable to say that, sure, the match is the match. But without a reason to care eh, – and this is why I don't – this is why, honestly, it's, it's why 95% of the time I don't like face versus face matches. I, I need oh, good people. Wait, you know what I mean? Stop. But, that's exactly why I hated the Mustafa Ali Cedric Alexander feud. The me match too. was fine. The match was fine. Yeah. But miss me with all this same size of the same coin type stuff and feel yep. each other. That's cool every now and then. But they, they those guys needed a story to be told. And yes, they I get did. it was the heart versus the soul and all that. And I'm, I'm not shitting on them because they both deserve to be in that spot. They're both yes. tremendous performers. They both they work are. really hard. And they both have amazing things to, to, to give the show, to give the audience and all of this, but they needed an, they needed an antagonist in that mm-hmm. feud. So yeah, that just made me think of that. Well, no, that's fine though. That's kind of like what we're talking about. We're not reviewing WrestleMania, but we're re- reviewing WrestleMania. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it goes, it goes back to, to just the whole, there's a story here, you know, and I don't like, and I want to, I want to touch on Charlotte and Oscar for a second because I think it's really important to to note. I don't know how many people actually caught this because mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. in the live crowd with the people I was sitting with, they didn't catch it. Mm-hmm. But if you if you're watching this match, this was a match that didn't have a sh- like a huge build necessarily mm-hmm. in terms of like um, this was face versus face as well in a lot of for the most part. But this yeah, one, both faces, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- this but this one worked a little bit differently because. It's streak versus essentially legacy. Streak versus title. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and so you, you think you know right now on the roster maybe there's like two people that you think could take out Oscar, Charlotte and Rousey. In my opinion, you know, and Rousey hasn't done anything yet. So, and I think in, you, in, yeah, in if, WWE you Charlotte, if you give Sasha a little build and let her get healed, she could sure. probably get there too. But yeah, yeah, and maybe Charlotte even and Becky. Lynch, maybe even Becky. I don't know, but there's a very few. Becky ain't very never few. been pushed to that level, dog. So I don't know. I know. That. Yeah, it may not happen, but yeah, but you, you know, there's so few. <laughs> yes. So for one, just before I even touch on this match, I just want to say, you know, Charlotte. I was first of all, I wanted Charlotte to win, and then so you know, one and nothing against Oscar, I love her. One, I hate streaks. And I think we've discussed this before ad nauseum I hate streaks I do so too. i do too yeah. I've, I've gone it, on it, and on and on about how much i hate them yes it puts that it takes that thing hanging over oscar's head away now we know she can be beat and not only do we know where she can be beat now she can be beat by nefarious means because yes. now the streak is over and you know what i mean so now, on being a badass yes yeah she can be oscar and she can get screwed over and you know they ended the streak, but at least they didn't end it the way they ended goldberg streak okay so let's just be <laughs> happy about that all right yeah and the streak had to end at some point so offsides of that though there is such a perfect wrestling story like a, a, the story in the match so some matches right the story is told with the heat on the match mm-hmm. the story didn't have any heat this is we're, we want we love both of these people mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but there's a story within the match and it's beautiful and this is why storytelling matters so much and i'm so proud of of these two for just absolutely killing it. My match of the night, 
Not my match of the weekend, but my match of the night at WrestleMania. Absolutely. What was your match of the weekend? Champa Gargano. No, oh, okay. no Champa okay. Gargano. Yeah. Okay. Overall, yeah, that was the match of the weekend. Okay. Um, so Charlotte and Asuka, they have this match, right? And Asuka, I mean, she's getting her, getting her licks on Charlotte. Okay, absolutely. Charlotte gets her arm fucked up midway through the match. Like, you know, gets her arm is hurting midway through the match. Mm-hmm. And towards the end here, when she's getting ready to put that figure eight on Asuka, mm-hmm. she she missed, she couldn't get it once earlier. And she at the end, she rushes to get it on. And she knows she has to get the eight part in mm-hmm. to get Asuka to tap. It's the only way. Yeah. She has to bridge. But her arms hurt. Right? So she can't, she bridges for a minute. But at the end, if you notice, if you're watching, she, her hurt arm. She held her arm, yeah. She holds, she holds that arm and bridges with one hand. Kind okay? of a call back to so, the Shayna Baszler match the night before when Shayna held right. her with her hair, yeah. Right, and so she's the story is being told that the only way I can beat this girl truly is getting this figure eight locked in. But I can't lock it in unless I'm determined, and I have to, I have to overcome this arm injury to lock it in. It's beautiful, like inside the match, like. Okay. God so, bless these girls, man. Like seriously. So then that brings a question. That brings a question to my mind to ask you. There's clearly a difference between the storytelling going into the match, like the backstory of the match and this and that, yeah. and the storytelling within a match. Can you at least acknowledge that? And trust me, if you want to go on this indie crusade, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, I've been there. I'm with it. I'm with yeah. it. I'm, I'm built for this. I'm with it. But and I'm just joking. Like I'm I'm serious, but I'm no, joking. Oh yeah, I know. I know. Um But there are a lot of the t- and you know what? And and this I wanna take this time with the podcast to acknowledge the fact that uh I wanna pu- I've said it before, but I wanna publicly say it to the young bucks, I've become fans of you guys. Because I was a very big young buck hater for the longest, but they have and they've changed a bit, which is probably what brought me around, but they were a big they were probably the biggest uh, guys involved with this because their matches never had stories. They just did stuff. And right. now their matches, I'm, not, I'm talking about going into or afterwards, but just in the scope of having the match, their matches have stories now, which is right. kind of what brought me around. But there's a difference uh, between you know having a story going into the match, like Rousey, Angle, and Triple H, and Stephanie had, and a story being told within the match, like Charlotte and Oscar, right? Right. So, I so when when because clearly WWE is a, is sports entertainment. It's it's story based wrestling. Ring of Honor and Impact and the major companies are also to a very, very to a to a pretty heavy extent story based wrestling. New Japan right. is presented as sport, but they have stories. So that, that's the difference. That's the outlier. But when we're talking about a lot of these uh, smaller promotions, a lot of these indie promotions, a lot of, like, you know, where it's, you know, where you have a show a week, a show a, a month or two shows a month, and people just come in for the show and this, that, you know, you book who you can. Yeah, it's hard for them to maybe tell the story going into it, especially when you don't have television to tell it or a YouTube or whatnot. But you can tell the story within the ring, right? Right. My, I'm, I, I want this match more than you. My, you, my finishing move, Shinsuke Nakamura. My finishing move was a knee to the face, so I'm gonna take out your knee so you can't use it. You know, like there, right. you can tell stories, and I, I just wanted to acknowledge that because, yeah, you know, while what we're talking about, people are probably gonna be upset about it to a certain extent, but I do want to acknowledge that we know, you know, that a lot of these guys can tell stories in the ring. The problem is they're not. The problem is, it's just going, going, going. And where's the end in sight? You know, and, you know, and it's, and this brings up a good, another good point. I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned it because another thing that happened, and this is, we're going back to super card of honor here for a second. And this is why I'm glad I went to this show and watched takeover on TV. Now in hindsight, takeover was a better show. Supercard told you that by the way, yeah, I know, but I'm glad I went because it gave me a really good perspective on some things. Okay. And um, one thing that I thought really stood out about the Supercard show, uh, beside outside of Cody and Kenny, because I can go on for hours about how much how impressed I was with 
Cody and Brandy more than anything else. They're great. Um, and oh, just, by the way, yeah. did you notice yeah. that they were wearing gold because Kenny and Cody are the yeah. golden lovers? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful stuff. And so um, outside of that, though, I wanted to talk about another little segment that happened prior to the Cody Kenny match and the, the oh, uh, Dolph. Yeah. Okay. And this yeah. is important because once again, we go back to storytelling and the, so the whole weekend, most of you guys know by now the whole weekend, there was this big hullabaloo about the Louisiana athletic commission. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, you can't do a pile driver or whatever. And all the Indies owe Luke Hawks and Wildcat yeah. sports a lot of thanks. Cause he's the reason they were able to get away with what they were. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about this for a sec though, because bully Ray who, the night prior just got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, right? And he's like, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's some kind of like enforcer for the Ring of Honor. the commissioner or the, yeah, the basically he's in charge. Joe Koff is the COO and he's basically the wrestling guy in charge, yeah. Right. So Bully Ray, well, excuse me, Cheeseburger comes out. His partner gets fucked up. Cheeseburger needs a partner. Mm -hmm. He puts Bully on the spot and says, you know, one more match kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And And of course, black guy, white guy, Dudley Boy, yeah. (laughs) Right. So Bully, you know, he does his thing and and he gets in there with Cheeseburger and they do the whole thing. And then Bully turns on Cheeseburger. I won't say turn is the right word necessarily, but he beats the shit out of Cheeseburger. He's like, how dare you put me on the spot, right? Well, he turns because Bully was a really big face for a while. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. fine. Really big so faith he, in Ring of Honor. He, you know, and people love Cheeseburger. If you don't know who Cheeseburger is, you should I go to like... I don't know why. That is the, that is one of God's <laughs> biggest mysteries in life. I don't get it. I don't see... God bless him. I don't have right. no beef with the guy. You know, I'm happy he's over. But no I just beef. don't... I don't uh, under... Sorry. Right? See? See? I'm <laughs> even better at this than I thought I was. I don't get it. I've seen him in New Japan, and he's over there. He's over yeah. crazy over... I don't get it. I don't understand why people love this man so much. I need someone right. to tell me. Well, I couldn't tell you, so you have to ask somebody else. But no. the beautiful thing about it is Bully Ray, as it were, he grabs the old lifeless cheeseburger who's about as tiny as a pencil. About 115 puts pounds soaking wet. Yeah, something like that. He puts him in between his legs, and he gets on the microphone. And he's, you know, he's doing this whole thing. Well, you know, and Flip Gordon comes out to save him, right? Well, you, well you, you're you're kind of speed. You're you're giving it the, the cliff notes. Yeah. Bully Ray goes on this really really big diatribe about how this 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 generation of wrestlers don't have respect for the business. They don't know what they're doing, and they right. just come out here want to do whatever they want without showing respect to the to the past guys and and having sense about what they're doing. And Cheeseburger has the disrespect enough for him to think he's worthy of tagging with a WWE Hall of Famer and right, stuff like yeah. that, which led to Flip coming out to try to help Cheeseburger and go ahead. Yeah. But see, what's beautiful about that is once again, he's, it, it's almost like a, it's another story. It's like, you know, respect me because I'm the WWE guy. I'm the old school legend, whatever, you know, yeah. and you guys, you shitty fans and you indie guys just Flippy, do whatever you want. Dudes and stuff, he's yeah. basically tell he's basically telling the story of dude, we all love wrestling for different reasons, right? But he's doing it in a way where it's like he can still be the, sh- the asshole who's like, my way's better. It's that old CM Punk adage that when you tell the truth, people hate you for it. Right. And so Flip comes out and then Bubba grabs him, sticks him between his legs. And he's like, if you make move another muscle, I'm pile driving this kid and this whole show is going to get shut down. <laughs> no, I popped so hard when I saw when I heard dude. That. Of course. And the crowd is booing. Of course. Like, because once again, it's not about the matches, man. It's about the story. We're telling the story here. We know Bubba Ray, Bully Ray, whatever you want to call him, ain't going to do that. We all know the show's going to go on as planned. We're not idiots. Yeah. But you've got to, you got to give us a reason for just a second to give a shit. It can't just be we're out there doing headlocks and arm bars and all that stuff. It's just like, and there's another reason why I became like, I became a fan of Flip Gordon over the weekend and I don't watch a lot of Flip, Flip Gordon, but like, Flip but yeah, old. dude, he's yeah. awesome. And like, he was part of that bully rage. That's where he got me because it's like, he's out there to save his boy, 
you know, or Flip not was as busy boy last night that night because Flip was out there to save Cheeseburger. Then he came back out to save Brandy after he had a match with the. Yeah, Flip was busy that night. He was, and you know, God bless the guy. Yeah, like, but he was just at everything but he's still like, not all he was in. involved in was so important and it mattered, and you know. But he's still not all in, and he lost a vote to a dog. He lost the vote to a dog. I apologized to him for that on Twitter last night. <laughs> I did. I, I don't know did if you, you vote saw for it. Or not. I did. I, well, that's the thing. I <laughs> tweeted directly to Flip. I said, you know, I said I became a big fan of Flip Gordon this weekend. I almost feel bad for voting for Pharaoh over Flip. Almost. And he actually, he actually quote tweeted it with, "Can we get a recount?" So you know, yeah. No, oh, I mean, not seriously. Cody's it's great. Awesome. Cody's great too, by the way, because Cody. Cody was like, I'm going to start letting women in the Bullet Club. And Brendan was like, I'm your wife. I took a yeah. V-trigger for you to a table. He was like, baby, that would be nepotism. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. Like, and he's Cody Rhodes, a, right? He's there's Cody a subs- Rhodes. Yeah, there's a subset of guys on the indies who just really get it. And and yeah. God bless them because they have a good chance to – like if you don't watch indie wrestling – and that you know, if you don't, that's fine. But if you don't, and you really want to get into it, like there are some people out there who you can watch, and specifically, like they can really help move it. They they help move it in the way that it should be. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that it, for me, it just doesn't do it for me because it's so. Uh, we're just having a match to have a match. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's and it's not. Too, yeah. I can't do it. Some people can, and that's fine. More power to you. I'm not I'm not here to shit on people. Who just want to see wrestling matches? You know, yeah. I'm just here to we say it from likes and dislikes, yeah. different perspective. So, so before we move on to kind of, I guess the the last couple topics, I kind of put a bow on this. I want to I want to get your opinion on what do you think about Matt Riddle? Because if there was a MVP and MVP for the entire weekend, Matt Riddle wrestled like 13, 14 matches in like 10 shows, right? Something like that. In like three days, right? I mean, people built their entire shows around. In fact, his he had a show. GCW had a show that was his show, Bloodsport. Right. Um. So to be able to do that and every match be critically acclaimed. Um. What do you think about him? And do you think he understands the storytelling versus, uh? match quality argument that we're, we're having because we've seen him live. We saw him at Evolve the weekend of the Royal Rumble last year. He yeah. fought Chucky e. T, known as Dustin in his heel form, and they killed each other. Yeah, they yeah. did. Uh, um, I'm just curious what you think about him. Do you have any, I mean, I know you're not a big indie watcher, not because you don't want to or you're not interested. Well, some of that is, but you have white kids. But, yeah, uh, time constraints. Yeah, but what, what do you well, think of him? Here's the thing. I didn't see him wrestle at all this week, that weekend. I didn't go to any shows where he was involved, so I can't speak to the match qualities and any of that stuff. If if you if you or anybody else says that the dude killed it all weekend, and I, I, I believe that because mm-hmm. the dude is a very good talent. It's, Tremendous. I mean, he's a huge talent. Yes. Um, so, but, you know, I honestly I, – I don't have a fair – a strong opinion, so I don't want to just sit here and say one way or the other yeah. because I haven't seen a ton of him, and I don't – I, I don't have an opinion. Not that okay. I, I just I, I don't want to sit here and just say some random shit because I don't have it. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. But I'd be more interested. I'd be more interested in your opinion or even one of the listeners' opinions on him as a storyteller because they're gonna know better than I'm gonna know, and that's just me being honest. Well, listeners, hit us up at Outside mm-hmm. Edge SS. Hit us up. Let us know uh, what you think of Matt Riddle. I mean, we know he's a great wrestler, but does he get the storytelling versus match quality because he's always going to have match quality is there. He has perfected yeah. that for a guy who to be as to go as far as he has in terms of time from, from how long he's been wrestling to like, he, he's got that in the bag, but it can, is he telling stories? And I realize that, uh, evolve has TV, but they don't, it's not a weekly show. You know, they tape, a, they tape a card every twice a month, I think, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, there are stories like I know he's had beef with some of Stokely, ha- Stokely Hathaway's guys, and you know what? I'm I know I'm I'm just going a mile a minute. Can I express <laughs> how happy we're gonna move on? Can I express how happy I am to see Stokely Hathaway on WWE television or in the WWE ring? Stokely Hathaway is the last of a dying breed. 
I mean, Paul Heyman will tell you he's not a manager. He's an advocate. And to prove that, he only works for one guy, right? And in in, in real life, he works for dude in real life, right? Sure. Um, or works with dude in real life. Maybe not for his. That's, better, that's a bad way. But you can't name me no other managers. And Paul Ellering's gone now. You can't name, name me no other managers but Stokely Hathaway. And Stokely managed, like, everybody on the indies, dog. I'm so happy <laughs> to see that little dude. And I mean that affectionately, not like, a, you know, like dissing him to see him get some shine in WWE because they need to they need to hire that dude. Uh, there's yeah, a lot sure. of evolved guys. There's a lot of Gabe's guys, Gabe Sapolsky, you know, WWN, evolve, things of that nature, who would do great in WWE. Keith Lee and Walter are supposedly on the way there soon. Uh, I would be fine seeing Tim Thatcher sign and. A German ring camp, ring camp stable. You know, there's a lot there. There's a lot of potential. The, well, no matter what you think about story, story quality, or, or any of what we're talking about, the quality of wrestling right now, whether it's WWE or any of the other big companies, Lucha Underground just finally got their next season going. Mm-hmm. Or just indie stuff is the best it's ever been. So, and that's that's before the, I'll wrap it up here yeah. before. That is another reason in and of itself to just go to a WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. Because you, Immerse the thing about the beautiful thing about WrestleMania is it brings everyone there. Okay. Companies from all over come and they do this and you can see so many people that you've never seen, get a taste of something different, you know, like you don't have to go there and go see, just WWE stuff. You can go see so many other things. You can see Evolve. You can see WWN shit. You can see Ring of Honor. Whatever you want to see, it's the gonna be there most likely. Shows, yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff, guys. I mean, I went to Kaiju Big Battle for God's sakes. Okay. We ain't gonna like, talk about that. No. Yeah, we don't have to talk about it. No, but that's just. That, I mean, because I can't, kind of I can't thing. co-sign that one. <laughs> no, and that's okay. But that's that stuff is there. If you want to get a taste of the many intricacies of the world of professional wrestling. Yeah. And get outside your comfort zone. That's the time to do it right there. Like, you know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's... But yeah, we got we, we, we got to move on, man. We got to move on. Uh, there's a, a few things going on. So, Rance, you, you're the lead-in guy here. So, just roll us in, brother. What did you uh, think of the call-ups on Raw and SmackDown? Of, of the call-ups. Okay. So, there was really only one call-up on SmackDown. So, we can go to well, two. two. Because they, they are a tag team. Yes. So, let's see. Walk me through it a little bit here. On Monday Night Raw, we had well, AOP. I'm, so, I'm going to run through the call-ups and the returns. How about that? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. In terms of call-ups, a, uh, the Authors of Pain were called up. Yeah. Uh, no Way Jose. Shout out to my boy, No Way Jose, was called up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, um, Ember. wow. Ember Moon was called up. I shouldn't. Houston. Yeah, I'm tripping. And yeah. Bobby Lashley made his return. Um... Uh, Jeff Hardy made his return as basically a singles guy and uh, Samoa Joe made his return. Right. And on, I guess you can say Daniel Bryan made his return because he's a full-time wrestler. Now Paige is retired and is now the new general manager on SmackDown and what everybody was hoping for Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, the Iconics made their illustrious debut. Yeah, uh, they played. Uh, they they immediately made an impact. They had the so, biggest impact of all of any call of the weekend. Of absolutely, the weekend. yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about it. Um, in terms of the call ups, I'm not Ember Moon AOP. Pretty much expected. Yes, especially after especially after Ember lost to Shayna on Saturday. Yes, uh, a- and AOP lost as well. I mean, pretty much AOP's expected. AOP's had nothing to do for a year. So yeah, yeah. So those two were expected. Um. No way, no way, Jose. I like No Way, Jose. Uh, but he's there to get his ass kicked a lot, most likely. Well, the reason, think about this. There's always when you open live shows or you open, you know, a pay per view and stuff like that. You always want to have fun, right? Yeah. For the longest, it was Enzo and Cass, and they're gone, right? And before that, it was Adam Rose, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you have No Way, Jose, to fill that void. Plus, WWE always calls up a guy or a team who has done everything they can in developmental. Like, the Vaughn Villains got called up two years ago. What, Ty Dillinger? Ty Dillinger was called up last year, yes. Yeah. 
So that, that's kind of where I see, but where I place No Way yeah. is a little bit where Ty Dillinger is. Yes. Just on a different show, not yes. on SmackDown. Basically. Absolutely. But so it's fine. Um, fine. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with the call ups. I, I'm, there's no issue. Um, I want to see what they decide to do with Ember as a character, because my biggest criticism of her from the get has Love been that Wolf Twilight shit. Because Ember is outstanding. Mm-hmm. I, if you haven't seen any of Ember, and I'm sure you have if you're listening to this podcast, because we're WWE guys, yes. NXT guys, but Ember's great, and she is an immediate improvement. I mean, she that division just got so much better I with her on the roster. I find it interesting that they had a tag with the WWE champion, with the women's champion. Yeah. I find that interesting that Nia would bring her in. And, of course, Nia's about inclusion and the, uh, everything she stands for now. But I find it interesting that her debut would be tagging with the person who she's going to take the title from that, that i found that interesting yeah it is it's kind of weird I, I don't know where they're going to go with that but you know these are call-ups so it's kind of like in what way can we introduce these people to the biggest pop i guess you know sure, like sure uh, naya you know got over pretty good at wrestlemania and i think people have come around on her for the most like they always kind of liked her but they've really come around accepted her in that face role now oh i'm i, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I know it made sense i get that i'm yeah. just saying ember's gonna go for the title so from a story standpoint did she just bring her big her next challenger in sure yeah yeah um as far as aop goes i like the way they did that i think a lot of people knew that paul ellering isn't really wanting to do all the travel make the towns yeah yeah so it was a good way to kind of say, hey, thanks for what you did, but get the fuck out of here now. We got this. We're on our own. And it's a big deal for him to be back on Raw after 17 years, dog. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I, this could be, I could be wrong about this. And I, I want to speculate, but I'm going to anyway. Mm-hmm. So they're having this tag team eliminator thing for they're the titles. Not in it. They're not in it. They didn't get in it. See, I didn't pay much attention to how well, they were the doing. The tag team eliminator was uh, the revival versus the club. The revival won that match. Yes, yeah, on revival. Then, uh, Bray and Matt Hardy, who I I love that storyline where they've gone with it. By the way, they beat Titus Worldwide. So next week, the revival will fight Bray and Matt, and the winner will fight the Bar and Jetta. Okay, so let's put it this way: I think the AO- AOP is going to be champs really quick. I don't know how quick, but I think they're gonna be champs pretty quick. They better be um, because yeah, they are they're they're too <clears> dominant <throat> of a team to have to languish. No offense yeah. to the revival because I know people are gonna. This is the point of the of the show. People are gonna say, but the revival are the best team in the world. They are, <laughs> they are, they legitimately are, but they aren't dominant. Right. Right. So, so let's yeah. so that let's move from the call ups to the returns. Uh, we got Samojo, and Samojo is Samojo. Like I don't, I don't get like super excited about returns because I know where those guys are. Like, like Samoa Joe, Joe I was excited about definitely. J- Joe is the one to get hyped for yeah. more than anything because he's immediately coming in. He obviously looks like he's going to be working on a program with Roman. Um, and he's so good on the mic. Yeah, he is, and he he's good without having to be catchy, which I think is important. You know Clive. what I mean? Like he, it feels real with him. You know, Clive from two hundred five. Clive from two hundred five. Clive, yeah, from Ricky and Clive said it perfectly. <laughs> he has great syllable structure, so mm-hmm. the way he says things make it feels authentic. Yeah, it's not just what he's saying, but he says them in a way that feels like, you know, it just makes you feel different than a lot of people, other people do. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy. You know, him coming back as a singles guy, if that holds, doesn't really surprise me because Jeff Hardy's Jeff Hardy. He's and over. He doesn't need he, over, he, yeah. over as hell. He doesn't need Matt to be over. He's on his own. He's over. People love Jeff. And Matt so, doesn't need Jeff to kind of steal his thunder. Yeah, at this point, yeah. It's the might be the first time ever, at least in the WWE ring, where Matt doesn't need Jeff either. Jeff didn't need Matt, but Matt doesn't need Jeff. Like yeah. it, it just kind of it kind of works out for yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, was there another return that I missed? What you said it? I forgot. I'm I'm so bogged down. I've, I've watched so much wrestling. Um, we got Jeff and Joe. Was there another return on Raw? Or was that it? I want to say there was another one, but I'm, I'm, I, it it slipped my mind too. Yeah. So. Oh, Bobby Lashley. Whatever. That's the interesting. Oh, okay. One. Yeah. That's the interesting. One. Lashley. And I, and 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 I want I want to lead you in on this. That's the interesting one because. For so many reasons, 
first and foremost, his past in WWE having unfinished business and the way he left. He didn't leave yeah. controversially, but it wasn't a good it wasn't a good party, right? And then and the missed potential and and looking at him and he looks like a genuine star. And then there is the case that he went to Impact, TNA, G, Global Force, Anthem, Owl Wrestling, and was an absolute beast over there. Like I actually yeah. have watched some of his stuff over there and was amazing. Learn how to talk, right? Then there's yeah. the fact that he actually became legitimately M- a legitimate MMA re- fighter who was successful. Like he's lost one fight. He's like six and one. Like he's good at it. But then there's the fact that we are sitting here trying to figure out who could be Brock and who yeah. is better suited from a look standpoint to stand up with Brock, to have the resume to stand up with Brock, MMA versus MMA, and you know, to, to take the title off of him, who's better built at this point? Bobby Lashley. Uh, not many. And once again, I'm going to go back to the point that I'm completely disinterested in the universal title. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sorry. So I don't really give a shit if they brought Bobby Lashley to in to beat Brock Lesnar. Do it. I'm down. I don't care. Um, and it's no offense to Bobby. This is not Bobby Lashley's fault. Okay. Is I don't care Brock, who they yeah. did. I don't. Yeah. I like. If that's what the plan is, I don't know what the plan is because he came in and beat up Elias. Well, everybody beats up Elias. So, like, I'm just saying, you know, like, it's cool and all. I'd have been more impressed if the asshole Universal Champion had showed up on Monday and Bobby Lashley at least came out to just confront him, you know, well, but... We, we can't do that because, you know, they have another story to tell. Well, no, let me take the back because Joe confronted Roman. So, yeah, I guess you could have done that. So, there's, you know, there's... There's some we know Joe confronts Roman and Roman's got a date set with Brock, right? So why couldn't yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to get into all that bullshit. Just the point is, uh it's cool to see Lashley back. Um I like Lashley all right. I'm not like I'm not don't hate the guy, I don't love him. He's I mean, works for me. He I, went out he left WWE and did the damn thing when he left. I put it like this. I'm excited to see him and how he's changed and adapted to what WWE needs now. And I'm excited for those for those who are apathetic to him based on his last tenure to see the growth he's made. Because dude is legitimately a completely different performer. Well, let's also consider one thing here. If, if Lashley comes in and wins the Universal title, let's think about how many African-American men have won the uh, WWE championship, the top belt in the WWE? Mm-hmm. Well, well, okay. So hold on, that's a loaded question because we've had the Black World Champions. Yeah, but we have. Is the Universal Championship the top belt? Because that's not the one with the lineage. The, the 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 controversy is them winning that WWE Championship because they got the lineage lineage going back from you know the right. Hacking Smiths and 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 Bruno all those years and all that. And that's the one that the Rock is the only guy who's touched it. Yeah. Right. And so and. Rock, the Rock is black. I don't want to disrespect him like that, but he's also more, uh, he's also more associated with the Samoan heritage. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so you know, Ron Simmons won the WCW belt, and Bubba Brazil was a world champion in some other promotion back in the days and stuff like that. And of course, Mark right. Henry and Booker T. But uh, I guess you consider the Universal Championship the main championship because it's on Raw and because Brock has it. That but, that would be my reasoning. Yeah, yeah. but I want and I, it's universal, right? You know, I, the name. Oh, I know. Trust me, let's not go there. But yeah, um, you know what I but mean. But I want I want to see a black guy win that WWE title because that's the one that's just elusive to seems to be elusive to us. But let's talk about Billy Kay and Peyton Royce real quick, and then I want you to go ahead and spit your fire because I know you got some fire to spit. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, and before and I also want to acknowledge that Andrade Cien always not getting called up is a travesty. So oh, yeah. I hope that when he gets caught up with Zelina Vega and I've read the spoilers for NXT the month, they got some stuff going on, but I hope that when he finally does get called up, which hopefully is by SummerSlam or after SummerSlam, that they have a ready-made story for him because he is so good and deserves to be, have a great debut and whatnot. But you will get no argument from me on that, sir. So the superstar shakeup is clearly going to change a lot of things, and I don't even know if they know what's going to change. In fact, I don't know if Charlotte's going to be on SmackDown next week. Yeah. But um, 
Billy Kay and Peyton. I'm almost, I'm almost, of course, I, I, I'm not one of those guys that says that, you know, oh, I'd rather you stay in this so you don't go to, no, I, I don't believe in that. But I'm terrified for what could prospectively happen to Billy and Peyton because there, is, there are too many Hill Stables. Right. In the women's division. Uh, Absolution, Riot Squad, uh, Billy, and, Billy and Peyton now. Um, and I'm sure, and, and then of course, you know, even if they're not stables, Carmella and Natty seem to tag together a lot, and Tamina and Lana tag together when Lana, they let her wrestle, you know, stuff like that. And of course, Alexa and Mickey. Um, so, of course, they need a women's tag division. I don't know how they do that. That's another, we'll maybe talk about that next time. But uh, the, the beauty of Peyton and Billy is they can talk. So they don't have to be, and and Natty's a terrible talker. Carmella's a good talker, but you know, she has her moments. But Mandy and 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 Sonya aren't good talkers. So the beauty of them is they can stay relevant without having to be in the ring. Yeah. But with them having made such a huge impact, like where do they go? Yeah, you know that that's a tough that's a tough one because let's face it. Nobody made a bigger impact this weekend on, on the post shows than they did. Yeah. Really, when they came in the night after Charlotte just broke Oscar's streak, and laid her out, yeah, and then let Carmella come down and win the championship off of her off of Charlotte. Like, okay, like you can't make a bigger impact, really. Yeah, at least on the you know on the women's division. So, but you're right. I will say this: look, when we talk about absolution. Part of the reason they might have brought but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now that I think about it in my head. Cause like absolution, while they still exist in theory, that was built around page and page is no longer there. Yeah. But this, so no it's kind of like, sure. Yeah, I or get, I mean, they're, they're a yeah. tag team, but that doesn't mean they can't go on their own single separate ways at some point. You know what I mean? Cause I think they got a face character in Sonya if they want to go that route. Because of the LGBT thing, it could get that way, but she's but she's a good heel too, and I I feel like she's gonna be Ronda's first uh full like full time opponent because, right because of be. the comfort of her moving her moving with the MMA person, so there will right. be some under, there'll be some synergy in the ring. But if you decide to separate them, you could actually even Mandy I mean I don't yeah that or you could not even just I mean just if you decide you want. A, a heel stable, you could actually take the Riot Squad and move them over to Raw, and which keep I feel like going to happen, and, right? And keep Peyton and Billy on SmackDown and let them do their thing over there because the Riot Squad, as you know, a waste obviously of a we know Ruby Riot is very talented, but it hasn't worked. It's a waste of a stable. Call yeah. it what it is. I mean, no offense to just, Liv, no offense to Sarah, but it's yeah. a waste of a stable. You could take them over to Raw. And split them. And not even necessarily. You don't have to split them if you don't want to. But you could, there's some things you could do there. I think you've got them do some moving around. Yeah. Uh, I do think Charlotte is going to Raw because I. The reason why uh, I say that. Uh -huh. I think I don't think I think we're building to a Charlotte Rousey main, WrestleMania match next if year. If that's the case, then I don't think they they could be on the same show all year because they're going to have to have some confrontation. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, fuck. I, it, it's really it's and difficult then, because and think about this. Charlotte came from Raw last year in the Superstar Shakeup, so sending her right back would kind of kill the purpose. Yeah, I guess so. There's going to have to be some movement for this it's, to work because, it's there's, very like you said, have have Ronda be the champ or have Charlotte be the champ and have the Royal Rumble winner win again and just run it that way. Yeah, you can run that same thing kind of like they did this year, but um, what I mean is just in terms of like forget that match for a second, just with all the heel stables. I think I personally think they need to split absolution because Paige is gone and I think they need to just split those two up and let them go their own route because personally this is my personal opinion I think Mandy is suited to be a heel like just because oh, she's much. she's so gorgeous yeah you know and it's just like she can she can do that and Sonia because we know Sonia's story and I think I think she can you can make her a face maybe after she gets out of a program with Ronda, right? Like I think maybe you could you can do that. Yeah, maybe be so. because of the inclusion thing, the LGBT stuff. So I think you can do that with her. Yeah. And then with Absolution, if you bring them over to Raw, I don't. Do you have to split them up right now? I don't know. 
you can't split the Riot Squad up right now. You meant the Riot Squad. You can't split them up right now because Liv and Sarah Logan would be lost. Oh, and Without. and, 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 and uh, please don't 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 parse my words. They're you know they were singles before this any other. What I mean is they already don't have any they already don't have any direction right now as a group. So yeah. just you know I don't want them. Wow, this is it's all sounding bad, but I don't want them to turn into Alicia Fox and they're just around. In theory, in theory, if you wanted to do a superstar shakeup, if you wanted, and I know they they love to do their heel and face authority figures. If you wanted to, in theory, you could take the Absolution Girls over to SmackDown and have Paige giving them all the opportunities. Or being the first opponents for Peyton and Billy, something along those lines. Like in theory, you yeah, could do that. Yeah, in theory. But then Paige basically made a face turn. So. Yeah, she did. Yeah. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of things you could do. There uh, is. I don't know. The superstar shakeup is going to answer a lot of those questions for us. So speculation is, it is what it is. It's fun. Yeah. You know, but I think you know we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. So there uh, you go. You know, the call ups this year were interesting. I'm mostly excited about Peyton, Billy, and AOP. I'll say this. Um, this is probably the most, and every year, I'm not going to ever say a person isn't deserving, you know, but this is the most deserving group I've seen in a long time. Sure, yeah. Where every person had reached their apex in uh, NXT, every person has something they have to uh, bring to the card immediately. Like, it's it's a really good group. But so, yeah. we said all that. So, Carl, go ahead, man, spit your fire. All right, so I have <laughs> – okay. Uh, most people know by now they're having the greatest Royal Rumble event in, in Saudi Arabia. Yes. And there's all kinds of things we can talk about with this. We can talk about Roman and Brock in the steel cage. We can talk about the fact that there aren't going to be any women on this card. We can talk about yes. – That's yeah, that, I mean, That is a conversation that needs to be And had. we can do that, and we might have that conversation next week. But we've gone long, and I want to get into one thing right here, right here, right now. Bruce Seven Undertaker. <laughs> they're having they are having a casket match at this show. And if I have to see one more fucking thing about how Rusev is being buried and Rusev Day is over as we know it. You know what? Maybe after this match, maybe Rusev gets his release granted that he supposedly asked for and he goes his own way. Okay? Maybe. I don't know. Let me just Let's just talk about this for a second. Rusev is over with the crowd. We know that. Rusev is selling merchandise. We know that. Okay? So now he's in a casket match. When was the last time we saw a casket match? I'm not a historian. Christ. I, I'd I, love to know. All right, so we're getting one of the signature yeah. and seldom used matches in the WWE, right? Yes. We're getting that, first of all. So let's check that box. Yes. We're getting The Undertaker, who is arguably one the greatest of all time. Arguably. You can, whatever you want to feel about time, it. Yeah. In WWE, he's arguably the greatest of all time. Yeah. Without question. And yeah. he's had the same – not only is he that good, but other than the, the – he's basically been the same guy with respect to the American badass most of his career. Yes. Okay? He's like the conscience of the WWE. That's – yes. Yeah, like he's still over – 20, 30 years later at this point, okay, he he wrestles once a year, typically. Mm-hmm. I think he, there's a few times where he had like a tag team match uh, in between, like he, no more than twice a year does this guy ever wrestle. Yeah, okay? it's, it's a, few, a few times, yes. And so you're going to tell me, everyone's going to tell me that by having Rusev wrestle him, that all of a sudden... Rusev is now being buried? Are you kidding me right now? Okay, first of all, if Rusev loses in 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. Because just like John Cena lost in three minutes at WrestleMania, Mm -hmm. it is a... To wrestle a guy who barely wrestles that is that important to what the WWE is and has been in that match, that's a fucking honor. He's not being buried He's, I mean, that is like, this is, that's a reward. Like, to, even if he does lose, which he probably will. Okay. Like, okay. 
all of a sudden Rusev Day is buried and and really you don't think Vince enjoys those uh that money he's bringing in from Happy Rusev Day shirts he enjoys any break. type of money he gets yes damn right he does like don't like don't miss me with all this like everybody thinks because he didn't win the match at Mania he didn't win the the opportunity to get the rematch against Ginger mm-hmm. for the next pay per view that all of a sudden it's over for Rusev really. Well, uh, if I can jump in here real quick. Yeah, please. You're absolutely right. Um, this is this is a case of us once again projecting our feelings and thoughts on a situation without taking into consideration business. Wrestling is fake. At the end of the day, it is scripted, and one person picks who wins and who loses. So right. all a wrestler could control is how is that they are utilized and what they do once they're utilized, right? They can control anything else right. other than that. So, you know, a lot of people would, would like to think that Rusev is underutilized. And my, argu- I, my argument would be that they're wrong because Rusev is on the show every week. Rusev has some type of promo or segment. In, or he has a talking segment, him and Aiden do, or a match every week where he is utilized. Rusev is selling merch rusev has numerous shirts or merchandise on wwe shop whereas some people don't have any right again i hate to use alicia fox as another example alicia fox had to basically beg to get her first shirt right yeah um so and yes he may lose quite often but scripted wins and losses don't matter they're picked by one person so at the end gender of the day, mahal perfect example wins yes. and losses don't matter so at the end of the day, if he's losing, it doesn't matter. Now, from a personal standpoint, do we want to see him higher on the card and more successful? Absolutely. Sure. Rusev is an awesome dude, um, lovable guy, and a really great at his job. But to the Undertaker point, I'm sick of the Undertaker. And I don't mean that. That's, I love him. That's I, fine. And yeah. it's, it's not because I'm sick of the gimmick. It's not because I'm sick of seeing him. It's because I'm sick of him being Brett Favre in that he continues to tease retirement and then come back. After right. so long, my emotions are gone. Yeah. You know? So, and, and, and t- while I say that, he has the right to continue to do this for as long as he wants. He and wants the to other thing about that. Not, he can. Yeah. yeah not, not to cut you off, but the, the, the other thing about that is the dude's still fucking over. Like any yes. anytime, yeah. I mean, like yes. Anytime he co- he's dollars, he's he's money. He's still money. Anytime he comes out, anytime the name Undertaker is mentioned, people go crazy. Yep. So I mean, trust me, you watched it when Undertaker showed up. They lost their mind on Sunday. Everyone lost their mind because he's the Undertaker. Like yeah. so, yeah. As, and and that's fine, you know. Like what goes back to the whole like you understand, like you can hate a guy and understand. Sure, I do. What he time. means for the business, yeah. I, I mean, so time. yeah. But go ahead. Yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. No, yeah. I'm I'm glad you added that in. Yes, he is still very over. And he'll be over forever, forever. because what yeah. he means to people. Um, But yes, we need to get out of this. Well, I don't want to say we need to get out of this mindset because you can do whatever you want. But there, this mindset that a person's only utilized well if they're winning every match is wrong. And this mindset that a person's only utilized well if... Uh, if their success is is dependent on win, wins and losses in wrestling, mm-hmm. is wrong. It, these are things that just aren't true. And while you may want them to be true, it's not. So Rusev being put in, let me you know what. Let me let me flip it in, in another way. If you take away the Roman Brock match, which we only know about because it just got made Monday, right? Yeah. Take that away and take away the Royal Rumble. What other matches do you know on this card? That one, <laughs> the casket match, That's and it. and 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 they released like John Cena versus Triple H is going to happen. You know, I'm you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm I'm a wrestling nerd, so I know the card. Oh, but, I've seen the card, but yes. I, I forgot it already. There you go, right? <laughs> and this is John Cena and Triple H, but yeah. the fact that Rusev on this card in Saudi Arabia in this huge 60, 70 plus stadium, right? This huge yeah. stadium. In front of the entire Saudi royalty, the, the royal family, right, going into this yeah. new area of the world that they've never had a chance to really 
jump into. Yeah. Right? Having a special WWE Network special in the middle of the day for this specifically. Changing the booking of major shows for this show specifically. And Rusev got a match with The Undertaker? He was the choice. Think he about that. He was the choice. They so could I, have like, chosen so many guys. They could have chosen... Elias. Everybody, yes. They could have chosen The Miz. They could have chosen. I mean, I, I mean, I get you know you want someone that's kind of a matchup, but they could have chosen Anybody. plenty of guys. They could yes. have chosen Bray Wyatt. They could have. I mean, there's so many guys they could have chosen. Absolutely. Randy Orton. Bro, I mean, name a guy. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they chose Rusev. Rusev. And and you know, God bless Rusev because he gets it. He's he he gets it, and not only does he get it, but he has fun with it. And I like I don't know if you saw the tweet or not, but bury me softly. Well, Bury me softly, brother. Like he he knows. Like I don't know what his future holds. I don't know if he's gonna leave at some point. He might. I don't know. But look, look. If this is if this let's just say for for sake of argument that this is Rusev's swan song on the WWE, and after this he's going somewhere else. Let's just let's just say it, right? What better way to go out, dog? What way you go? <laughs> your last match is against the Undertaker in a casket match on a huge network event. In the, uh, in the yeah. first in the first show. In that stadium, in that area of the world. Like, I mean, exactly. they've had shows before, but you know what I mean. So, guys, seriously, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life, but I'm telling you, <laughs> chill the fuck out. Like, just chill the fuck out. We're not, like, sit back and enjoy it. We Like, the, the point of that, I say this all the time, and I, you know, I'm a broken record, but, and you don't have to listen to me, it's fine, but what are we doing if we're watching this and we're not having a good time? You know what I mean? Like, just find something else to watch. And I'm not, you know, like just, there's plenty of wrestling out there. If WWE doesn't do it for you, Hey man, that's cool. You got ring of honor. You got new Japan. You got evolve. You got Lucha impact. Underground. Lucha underground. Lucha underground. Yeah. You got Kaiju big battle brother. Like whatever you want to watch, <laughs> who cares? Just do American it. American beetle. <laughs> American um, beetle, the goat. So yeah. I, yeah. Said, said wonderfully. So, uh, with that being said, let's, let's get out of here, man. You know, we, I think we said everything we wanted to say. Do you have any last words? Uh, no, I just, you know, I, yes, um, I do. <laughs> no, I do. I know. Right. No, seriously, guys, uh, just do your, like, try and really just, if you don't, if you haven't watched some of the stuff this weekend, if there's anything you missed, definitely go back and try and watch it. I'm going to go back myself and watch mania. Um, like I said, at the top of the show, if you really get like, if you just ever get an opportunity to do the mania thing, Take it and run with it because it, it is an experience of a lifetime. Um, some like I know a lot of people sometimes won't go because like their significant other doesn't want to go mm-hmm. or whatever. Drag their ass with you mm-hmm. because even if you don't like wrestling, if your wife or your husband doesn't like wrestling or whatever, you bring them to something like that, they're gonna have a good time. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying turn them into the biggest wrestling fans in the world and make them watch Raw every week. Don't do that to them. Okay, but you take them to a WrestleMania. If that's what's holding you back, go. Um, you know, that's that's really it. You know, I just um, it's been a great week, man. It really has. It's a great week for wrestling, and now we're the clock is struck midnight, and we're starting back over. We're ready to move into the next phase, and we got a three hundred and sixty some odd days until the next WrestleMania. It's so, a new year. Yep, it's a new year. That, that's it. That's my final words. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, drop the uh, handle. If you want to find me on social media, you can hit me up at K E R V I N S M C. I need to change that because it's a little bit different now, but uh, for now, that's where you can find me. Hit me up. I'll uh, tweet all my garbage. So thanks for listening guys. So uh, before, before I give my handle and stuff like that, I want to give a shout out to Caleb who is our brother in SMC. This is our first episode of our new, of our new show. So, you know, I just, I want to show some love to my brother, man. You know, we miss him. Uh, I mean, I'm happy we were able to do this different format, which I'm pretty sure he, I don't, I don't know if he would necessarily work well in this format because he's, he's so indie centric and has his own set, a completely different set of thought process about wrestling than we do, but still love the guy. Uh, want to get some love to him. Go check out his stuff. He's a featured column writer now at social suplex. Um, just to throw a couple of shout outs out there. I want to, um, I am, I have a morning show now with Jordan Fox, AKA at Fox, the podcast, the good, good brothers morning show. 
So uh, check that out. We have a show every morning. Uh, I also had a very uh, a special uh, show with Simon Cotton, the social suplex special, Fuck You Mean. Uh, that's out there. <laughs> Go check that out. Uh, and um, I was a guest on the Ricky and Clive show that just dropped today. So go check them out. Uh, and of course, shout out to Ricky and Clive so, um, so on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Shout out to Four Nation Radio and shout out to Keeping It Strong Style. You can find me at It's Ray Cash, R-E-Y as in Mysterio, C-A-S-H as in Dollars. You can also uh, find the podcast at the new handle, outside, at Outsider's Edge SS. Um, um, hey, I wanted to jump in real quick. Yes. Um, so I hate to do this, but um, Social Suplex, uh, Jeremy put this out there earlier. I don't know if you saw it yet, but I saw it earlier. Yeah, I they, they're, too, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're looking for somebody to host an indie-centric podcast for Social social Suplex. So I'm going to throw this out there for anybody that's listening. If you're interested, the, you can email Jeremy. The uh, The email address is Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y, at socialsuplex.com. Yes. If, you have, if you're an indie guy and you love to talk about indie wrestling and you've been looking for a platform, uh, hit him Let's up and yeah. maybe. Maybe it'll work out for you. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know the hiring requirements. Okay. I'm not <laughs> HR. I don't know. I'm not going to look at your resume, but you can at least get in contact with them um, and see what you can come up with there. So, yeah. Yeah. Please do. I mean, this is, we love, you know, he's given us an opportunity to basically do what we want. So, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Talk wrestling with your boys. Have a, have a good chance for uh, having that platform. Um, there is a indie conversation to be had. We might not be the ones to have it, so you could be. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, man, uh, yeah, we're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Carl, anything else? Just God bless you. Have a good night. <laughs>